All right, today's video is going to be about how to teach your dog to go to his bed or a crate, same thing, same process used to do both things, exactly the same with just a minor little difference for the crate than the bed because of the walls. But my whole career, 20 years of dog training, the bed or place command is one of the most popular commands that owners always want to teach their dogs. But in the 20 years I've been doing this, I have never seen once anybody teach their dogs how to do this properly. Never. I, I have trying to go back 20 years and there hasn't been one time that it's been done correctly. So I'm going to go through the steps here with you of how the process is supposed to be done, but by popular request, so many people asking me to do a video, an instructional DVD on how to do the place command or bed command properly. This is a little preview into what the DVD is going to be about, but I just wanted to show people the proper steps to this because I have had a lot of people asking me at least to talk about the process of it. So first thing, first step to it is you never go to the bed or to the crate and ask your dog to get on it while you're at the object. Everybody does it, right? So they'll stand in front of the crate or the bed and go crate and point inside it, right? <laughs> or at the bed and point to the bed and go bed, <laughs> right? It doesn't work that way. Now that's fine if you want to step there and that's the only way your dog will know it is if you go to it and beg them <clears throat> and have to be on top of it to go, go to your thing, right? But that's not the real way to do this or teach this because now you're begging and you're hoping that when you go there that they actually go to it and don't run away from you. So what do most people experience when they're trying to get their dog into a crate and he doesn't feel like going in the crate right now? They go to the crate and go, crate! <laughs> and the dog stands back there and goes, is there a treat involved in this? Because then maybe I'll consider it right? So the dog smells, nothing there or nothing was thrown in yet. The dog is possibly out, right? And that's everybody I've seen in my career. Hundreds of thousands of clients that I've had in my career, right? They all go through the same thing. Dog doesn't want to do it. The dog backs up and goes, are you going to try to grab me now and throw me in there? Because I'm not voluntarily going to go in there. So the moment they go crate, they go to get him, the dog runs and takes off and now you got to chase him through the house to get him into his crate. So, the proper way is step number one. Even on the first day of training, I'm teaching my puppies or dogs to, from distance on the command, run to it. When they get there, do not come back off it the moment I send you to it. Charlie, please! 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 Right, so the moment I go place or bed, that means it's an implied behavior that they have to run to the object that they know that I'm talking about, whether it's the bed or the crate. The moment they get there, they have to just post on it, whether they're downing, standing, whatever it is. But they cannot take another step back off it once they're there. They're stuck on it 
until they are given another command, such as a release word, which is generally what I use, come, right? But they cannot even think about coming back off it the moment I have sent them there. Now, saying that, there is no stay command attached to the bed. You cannot go bed, stay, right? Why? Because let's say that you, which most people, a lot of people do this, and it is another mistake, they'll send the dog to the bed, they'll tell them to down, stay, but now, he, if he's really doing a stay, they cannot move out of that down position, even to get up and turn around to get comfortable and lay back down. That means they broke the stay command to get up, get comfortable, turn around, and lay down. They broke the stay. So now that affects the people's stay command in life because they're able to do it on the bed command. So especially if you, they go to the bed and they sit down. If you say stay while they're sitting on the bed, now they're expected to sit in a stay, sitting up until they're released. If you intend them to be there for a while, they can only stand on those front legs for so long, they're going to give out and the dog is going to lay down. Then they broke the sit-stay command. So that can become a real mess. So, it's again, the step is teaching the dog from distance when told to run and go to it. Not we stand at the object and go crate, bed, right? That's not the way to do it. That's begging. That's not a dog who knows how to perform the command. The next thing to that is, for me, for fluency, I change positions so that the dog will know how to do it if I'm not just standing someplace facing and pointing, right? Most people do things in one context. So for a dog to really know something, here for example, to show you, I'm going to show you here with the little German Shepherd puppy and then the Golden Retriever, that I'm facing the wall and I put myself facing the wall so she doesn't have my front. She, you're going to see her coming up and I just ask for the command for her to go to the place and I want to make sure that she understands what the word means when I'm not facing her or pointing what is her fluency. Rick. Right, and you see she runs right to her bed the moment I say the place command without facing or looking at it or pointing at it. That's a puppy who knows the fluency of what place means. Also, getting down, changing my position. So you're going to see here I go through a sequence of things with this puppy with facing the wall, having her do it, bending down. Place. Good. Sitting down. Mm -hmm. Wow. Check, please. And this is making sure that no matter what position I'm in, that the dog or puppy understands the language what, when I say the command, it's fluent. It's not, what was that? What did he say? What? 
<laughs> right? So you can see immediate responses. Once I say the word, they bolt to the bed and they do what they have to do, right? So most people, wouldn't you love to just be able to sit down and go place and you don't have to get up and go to the bed and beg them. You can do it from a seating position. But these things have to be worked on for the dog to understand the difference in the context, right? If you only always do it standing up and face them, that's the only way they're going to be able to ever know how to do it. So for me, I know how people work. I've been dealing with the public and going to people's homes for 20 years. They would love to sit down and be able to have their dog, you know, to go to a, a bed or a place that the dog knows it that well, right, that they don't even have to get up and be inconvenienced to have their dog or puppy go. Makes people very happy that a dog really knows things that well, right? So also not necessary, but here I always test the limits and I just want to make sure I have maximum fluency of things. You'll see we send Tux here and I've done it with the Goldens and all the other dogs too, but Tucks, we have on video doing this, sending him to his crate from the street and just testing his fluency before he was going to his new home. You know, I'm always making sure that if we can do it from short distance, I want to see it from long distance. I want to make sure this guy really has his stuff. But that's me. That's how I do dog training. I'm always looking for pushings further to make them more realistic, more fluent, easier dog and owner, right? So I'm always pushing those limits and making things a little more challenging but then more convenient in life that the dog really knows their stuff, right? So that's just how I go about everything. So, and then also here you're going to see we have Charlie who there's two things in life he loves. <laughs> One is the other golden retriever I'm going to show you that's with him, Lady, and the other thing he loves is a tennis ball. So his two favorite things in life are lady and the tennis ball. So once Charlie know, knew his bed command, of course, what am I going to do? I've tested him with other things smaller, but it's always about going for the biggest thing that that dog can't take, right? Their, their biggest weaknesses. So. I know that Lady and the ball are his biggest weaknesses, so here you're going to see I put Charlie on the bed and I start messing around with Lady and the tennis ball, throwing it across his bed. He has to hold the bed and not come off it to go chase the ball and he also loves to chase Lady all over the place and run with her and, and play fight. So his two favorite things are going to be running across his bed right? while well, he's got to stay on that bed when he was told place and not come off. Good boy, Charlie. Go on, Lee. Bring it. Good girl. Very good. Come on, Lee. Bring it. Good girl. This is challenging, testing the fluency and making sure that no matter what in life, those are his two favorite things. If he won't come off for those things, then I know his bed command is solid. And there'll be more details of this and about all these things I was showing there in really great detail on the DVD, on the instructional. 
But just to give, if you were to try this at home, you have to be able to teach these things in these steps. It cannot be walking a dog to a bed on a leash and always walking them to the object, the crate, the bed, because that's just the beginner steps of teaching those things. That does not mean they know it. That does not mean they'll always do it, right? That is the baby step of how to teach the crate or the bed. It is not the finishing touch. So, but most people teach that and think this the final step when really they just began the command, right? And that's why I've had that encounter of when people try to show me how good the dog is with their bed command, it never goes well, right? For 20 years, it's never gone well. I've never seen it done well ever. So that's why I decided to come out with the instructional video because so many people have been asking me to... <laughs> to show how to do that properly. <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed. Till next time, Miami Dog Whisperer.